Good morning, folks. We've got two top stories today from the cosmos and the sun, but more than a bit to breeze over in the beginning because we've got weather and space weather to discuss. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day on the sun was not appearing too active, but appearances can be deceiving. Behind the dark coronal holes are bright active regions, and they've got sunspots, and the solar flares are making a small scale return. This was accomplished on the backside of the active region as we watch. The development of a third sunspot cluster is what allowed stronger X-ray events to take place as the furiously growing area had the umbral fields colliding in the corona. The active region remains pretty much the same at the front and middle of the group. When we come to the magnetism, we find that the lead and central grouping are still red negative, but that backside cluster is beta delta all by itself with those close interactions. Solar wind up next. Top left, we see the purple on the rise, but it's from the high 200 kilometers per second range to the mid 300 kilometers per second range, from very weak to normal stream here, and nothing but green bars on the KP index bottom right. We will expect these coronal holes to amplify solar wind pressure towards the weekend. They're also setting a higher earthquake magnitude risk for our planet. Eyes open. Folks, if you didn't catch last night's Ice Age video, as I thank our Facebook buddy here for the gorgeous shot of summer in New Zealand, looks fun, dude. But even as I made that video last night, I hadn't appreciated how little the African and Arab cold wave was making the news. Dozens of you told me you had no idea that Spain and China's record cold and snow were followed by snow and cold from the Sahara to the Middle East. There it is. Quick jump out to even more ridiculousness. They found two of the biggest radio galaxies ever and they're sitting right next to each other in the sky. As gorgeous as the continuous form is, their appearance is something of a statistical anomaly if I may put it lightly. More breaking expectations. More stuff in distant space than they realized. Less need for dark matter and the people looking for dark matter push their fingers two millimeters further into their ears. When it comes to the deepest reaches of space, observations continue to surprise with size, coherence, and the timeline. Just wait until the next generation of technology comes out this decade. Background for the last story has us coming back to last night's video, where we went over climate model failures, the identification of the failing aspects within the models, and what really happens when you unlock the ice from the polar region. But a quick note on the papers, you can find still thumping the super warming fears. They all use one of those problematic models. They do not change CO2 sensitivity or eliminate the aerosol uncertainties. They ignore solar particle forcing and the true effects long term of unlocking that polar ice. I know because I see all of them and I see the ones ignoring reality continue to thump away while those who adapt to new data tell the story I told last night. And part of that was solar activity. A new reconstruction confirms part of the story of super high solar activity of late, but includes the white error bars on the past which really messes the thing up visually. On the left, the blue is the real data, white is the error bars, and you can see that even the highest blue range on the left can't match the spikes in red on the right from observations of sunspots, either in magnitude or in number of high range spikes. In fact, this is true going all the way back through the Holocene, all the way back to the last great super flares that brought us out of the last glacial period. And FYI, on this chart, the newest study would bring the solar activity from a thousand years ago, that would have been the blue spikes on the left, up to near the red horizontal line. We greatly appreciate your support. If you haven't seen last night's video, it's very simple to understand and quite powerful in its implications. It will also help this news make more sense in context. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.